So a very warm welcome once again to all of you viewing this Mass as it's streamed from Holy Spirit Parish Northride in the Archdiocese of Sydney. We celebrate our Eucharist on this sixth Sunday of Easter. The Easter season is drawing towards a close and we are about to celebrate the feasts of the Ascension of the Lord and Pentecost. The focus is on the gift of the Spirit, the Spirit of Truth. Our celebrants from the Congregation of St. Michael the Archangel, our presider is our parish priest, Father Stan Kluck, and also with him is Father George Goshkowski, our assistant priest, and Father Anthony Casamento, the regional superior. Father, and of the Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear friends, as the Easter season continues, we begin to focus on preparing the Feast of Pentecost. Jesus promised us the Advocate, the Spirit to guide us and speak for us. But the question is, do we welcome the Spirit in our lives? Are we attuned to the Spirit's voice in word and teaching? So, as we begin our prayer today, we pray for open minds and hearts, to the Holy Spirit's influence in our lives. Lord Jesus, you call us to keep your commandments. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you promise to send us the Spirit as our advocate. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you do not leave us alone, in our commitment to you, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Oh, you be glorified. 
only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world at the Sion last. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Grand Almighty God, that we may celebrate with heartfelt devotion these days of joy, which we keep in honor of the risen Lord, and that what we relieve in remembrance, we may always hold to in what we do, through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. In our first reading, we hear that the people of Samaria are baptised and receive the Holy Spirit. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Philip went to a Samaritan town and proclaimed the Christ to them. The people united in welcoming the message Philip preached, either because they had heard of the miracles he worked or because they saw them for themselves. There were, for example, unclean spirits that came shrieking out of many who were possessed, and several paralytics and cripples were cured. As a result, there was great rejoicing in that town. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, and they went down there and prayed for the Samaritans to receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet he had not come down on any of them. They had only been baptised in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then they laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let all the earth cry out to God which joy. Let all the earth cry out to God which joy. Joyfully to God all the earth. Sing praise to the glory of his name. Proclaim his glorious praise. Say to God how 
how tremendous are your deeds. Let all the earth cry out to God with joy. Let all on earth worship and sing praise to second reading, St. Peter reminds us that we are all called to witness, but with courtesy and respect. A reading from the first letter of St. Peter. Reverence the Lord in your hearts, and always have your answer ready for people who ask you the reason for the hope that you all have. But give it with see and respect and with a clear conscience so that those who slander you when you are living a good life in Christ may be proved wrong in the accusations that they bring. And if it is the will of God that you should suffer, it is better to suffer for doing right than for doing wrong. Why, Christ himself, innocent though he was, had died once for sins, died for the guilty, to lead us to God. In the body, he was put to death. In the spirit, he was raised to life. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I shall ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever, that spirit of truth whom the world can never receive since it neither sees nor knows him. But you know him because he is with you. He is in you. I will not leave you orphans. I will come back to you. In a short time, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me because I live and you will live. On that day, you will understand that I am in my Father and you in me and I in you. Anybody who receives my commandments and keeps them will be one who loves me. And anybody who loves me will be loved by my Father and I shall love him and show myself to him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. While I was doing my police chaplaincy last week, I was talking to a new constable about the state of the world and the reality that we are living in with the COVID pandemic at the moment. Now, during our conversation, the young constable commented to me, Padre, I'm probably more spiritual than religious. So I know God is kind of everywhere, but at the moment it seems sometimes that God is nowhere. Her unspoken question seemed to be asking, where is God? Now, it's a question that has been asked again and again throughout history. Many asked it, I remember, after the tragedy of the recent bushfires here in Australia. When things seem most bleak, when the world is racked by despair, where is hope? Where is faith? Where is God? Well, I think we find one answer in this Sunday's Gospel. Just before he ascends to the Father, Jesus tells his disciples, you will not be alone. The Father will give you another advocate to be with you always, he says. The spirit of truth, you know him because he remains with you and will be in you. I will not leave you orphans, I will come to you. Well, the advocate, of course, as we know, is the Holy Spirit. The Spirit will be with you, Jesus says. You will not be abandoned or alone. And he was right. Soon we will celebrate Pentecost, the birthday of the church and patron of feast of our parish, when the Holy Spirit fell like fire upon the apostles. Well, that fire is still burning. The advocate continues to advocate for all of us to this day. To those who ask, where is God? My answer is simple. Look around you. God, the Holy Spirit, is vibrantly, wondrously, beautifully alive. He lives in the hearts of those who are caring for the sick, the elderly, the poor, the helpless. He is in the hands that reach out to bathe the old or feed the hungry. He is in the eyes that look into the human faces of those who are alone or abandoned. He is in the arms that embrace children who have been pushed aside. God is there. Jesus is there. Closer to home, God is in the work of those who, for example, volunteer at the Matthew Talbot Hostel in Woolloomooloo, who day in and day out undertake what Pope Francis called a revolution of tenderness as they see the human face of those they earnestly seek to help. Seek that, I believe, and we will see the face of Christ. And we will be engaged in the ongoing advocacy work of the ultimate advocate, the Holy Spirit. It is a work that is happening everywhere. You see it in seminaries and houses of formation, in nursing homes and orphanages, in classrooms and mud huts and in open fields and soup kitchens. Any place where the good news is being proclaimed, not just with words, but with lives. And if you want to look even closer for signs of God's work in our world, look no further than our own communities. A few Sundays ago, we celebrated Good Shepherd Sunday. And when I was thinking about this after the Mass we celebrated on that day, I thought of our own religious community of Michaelites here in Australia. Over the last few years, we have been blessed with a number of ordinations to priesthood in our own Michaelite community. Behold, the Holy Spirit of work, the Advocate, is advocating. It was almost exactly 10 years ago that I first stood here in this church as a priest 
and had the great privilege to proclaim the gospel and proclaim that good news to each of you. This morning, I proclaimed it to you again, and it is good news. We need to hear now more than ever. The good news is that Jesus has not left us as orphans. God lives on around us and within us. Love prevails. Hope endures. The letter from Peter that we read exhorts us, always be ready to give an explanation to anyone who asks you for a reason for your hope. Well, here is my explanation, my reason for hope. It is Jesus Christ. It is God's Son showing us with open arms on the cross just how wide is the breadth of his love. My reason for hope, it is the word made flesh, his word. It is the joy and certainty of a 2,000-year-old promise that has been kept. It is the continuing presence of the advocate, the Holy Spirit, doing his advocacy work in the world in astonishing and exuberant and surprising ways. I have seen it in my own life and ministry. I see it in those usually sitting before us in the pews of this church, people whose faith and generosity continue to leave me grateful and moved and humbled. I see it in the men and women who respond generously to their baptismal call and give their lives to serve God's people and do it out of love and generosity and because of the unquenchable fire of the Holy Spirit. There are thousands around the world, men and women, devoting themselves to the message of this gospel and answering God's call to serve in so many ways. The well-known and the not-so-well-known, the ones who quietly go about living the gospel in service of others. Pray for them on this day. Pray for all who are sensing in some small way the whispered voice of the Advocate, calling them, inviting them, speaking out to them. You want a reason for hope? Look before you to the tabernacle. Look around you in your parish communities. Look within you to the fire that still burns, the flame that won't die. Trust and believe, here is our hope. We are not orphans. God, Father, Son and Spirit is with us. Amen. Dear friends, now let's profess our faith. I believe, I believe in, in one God, God the Father, Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken to the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church, I confess, I confess one, one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward, forward to, the to the resurrection of the, of the dead, dead and the and life of the world to come. come. Amen. Amen. Prompted by the Holy Spirit, we now bring our prayers before God, our Father. For the whole Church, that we may stand in solidarity with all who suffer for their faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for peace in a world divided by politics and religion. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for the honesty to question our own commitment to love as Jesus loved. We pray to the Lord. Lord. Hear our prayer. For people who are more likely than others to become severely ill from COVID-19, the elderly and people with chronic health conditions, may they be protected from harm <coughs> and be comforted in this time of uncertainty and isolation from their loved ones. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are feeling the financial strain during this time of turmoil, that they may be comforted and never lose hope for a better future. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in any kind of need, especially the poor, the sick and the dying, and for those who have died, especially those mentioned in our parish bulletin. We pray to the Lord. <clears throat> Heavenly Father, deepen our faith in your unfailing love for us. Grant the prayers we make to you through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Pray, dear friends, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hand. His name for our good and the good of all his holy church. May our prayers rise up to you, O Lord, together with the sacrificial offerings, so that purified by your graciousness, we may be conformed to the mysteries of your mighty love. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord. But in this time, above all, to lord you yet more gloriously, when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. By the oblation of his body, he brought the sacri sacrifices of all to fulfillment in the reality of the cross. And by commending himself to you for our salvation, showed himself the priest, the altar, and the lamb of sacrifice. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exalts in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness, 
Make holy, therefore, these gifts we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis A. our Pope and Antony our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles, St. Michael, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. As one God's family, united in Jesus Christ, in his love, let's pray together as he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And now let's offer each other the sign of love, the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away sins of the world grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I, am I am not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter under, under my roof. roof. But, but only say, say the word, word and, and my soul, soul shall be healed. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you again. Alleluia. Always, Alleluia, Alleluia. And now, dear friends, let's invite Jesus Christ to our hearts that He will come in a spiritual way. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most blessed sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there, and unite myself wholly to you. Never, Never permit me to be separated, separated from, from you. you. Amen. i 
stars There's one And I thought he was far So far from the sun I could only hope That he hears me And he sees me More than I do Than I feel Than I realize Who I am More than I try Just to find how More than I do, than I feel, than I realize who I am. More than I try just to find a reason why I'm never. Just when I call Nobody sees or know when I fall When I open my arms in prayer And then I look for my Savior Just to find Him in there In my heart He hears me and He sees Dear friends, I hope you are well and you are healthy. And with Father Anthony, Father George, we wish and pray for all of you, and we wish that we'll see you quite soon. We'll see you back in the church. We can't really wait. We miss you so much. But that's, that's good news, so please check also our website. And if you need anything, and I mean anything, please contact our office, especially I am talking about the sacraments, like reconciliation. You can call us and we'll be there for you. Father Anthony, in his inspiring homily today, asked this question, where is God? And he gave us the answer. Absolutely, he's working in his spirit. He's working in us. But if you have any doubts in your heart, where is God? Especially looking at what's happening in the world right now. I want to leave you today with a special task. After Mass, or at the end of the day before you go to bed, please go to your bathroom and turn on the lights and look at the mirror. Look closely for a while and then you will see the face of God in your reflection. 
you will see the love of God in your eyes. You will see so much goodness. And then you will feel how much God loves you. How much you are important to Him. You are His beloved daughter, beloved son. Stay safe in Jesus' heart. And now let's receive God's blessing. Let us pray. Almighty ever living God, who restore us to eternal life in the resurrection of Christ, increase in us, we pray, the fruits of this Paschal Sacrament and pour into our hearts the strength of this saving food through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go for the masses ended. Alleluia. Alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia. Saint Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do you, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan, and, and all, all the evil spirits, spirits who prowl about the world, the world seeking the ruin of souls. souls. Amen. Amen. Mary, our mother, most